Thank you. Thank you, Lord. We bless your name, Jesus. Find a resting place here, God. A place, God, where you can dwell, Father. Be enthroned on our praises, King Jesus. Be enthroned on our worship. We magnify you. Yes, we do. Above all the things that are clouding our minds right now, God, you be magnified, you be elevated, you be lifted up. Yes, yes, we place you above it all now, God. We set our minds on you, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, we set our minds on you, God. We set our minds on you, God. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. And we release a shout of praise, God, that is louder than every circumstance and situation in our lives, God. We release a shout of praise, God, to drown out, God, the things that would confuse us, God. We release a shout of praise, God, a shout that releases victory in the atmosphere, God, victory in our lives. We release a shout, a shout. Out of praise, God, we bless your name, God. We bless your name that every hindrance, every blockage that the enemy has placed must fall flat to the ground now because we shout in victory. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah, Jesus! Hallelujah, God, we give you glory. We give you glory. Hallelujah! Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Father, we know. We know, Father, that when we shout that it causes Jesus to stand still. Yes, it does. So stand still in this house tonight. Stand still in this place, Son of God. Manifest yourself. Stand still. Yes. Yes, stand still in this place. You cut your amaso kitye. Yandura bakusi kitiara maso. Stand still in this place in Jesus' name. Glory to your name. Stand still here, God. Yes, yes, stand still. Father, we know. We know that you can so fill this place and you can so fill this people that the enemy has no room to be here, God. Your Holy Spirit is more than enough, Father. So come and fill this people now, we pray. Come and fill us, God. Fill us, God. Fill us, Jesus. Fill us, God, to the overflow. To the overflow. Fill this room. Fill this room, God. Fill it now. In Jesus' name, we ask of you. Fill this place, God, that there is no room for the enemy, God. Fill it, God. Saturated with your glory, God. We put ourselves aside, God. We kill our flesh tonight, God. We don't want to get glory, God. It is our desire, God, for you to get the glory, God. So we decrease, God. Now you increase, Father. Increase. Increase, God. Increase in this house. Increase in this people tonight, God. Increase, God. Increase. Increase, God. Increase more of your power. More of your anointing, God. More of you, Jesus. More of your glory, God. More of your glory. More of your glory, God. 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 We cry as Moses did. God, show us more of your glory, God. We can't go anywhere, God. We can't go a step, God, without your glory. So show us. Show us, God. Reveal more of yourself, God. Bring the everythingness of who you are, God, into life worship center. We pray in Jesus' name. More, God. More, Jesus. More, God. More, God. We need more. We need more. We need more. We cry out for more of you, Jesus. Yesterday's glory won't be enough for us for today, God. We need more. We need more, God. 
more of you, Jesus. More of you, God. More of you, God. Yes, Father, more of you. More of you, Jesus. More. More of your glory. More of your presence. More of your power, God. More of you, God. More of you, God. More of your peace, God. More of your joy, God. More of you, Jesus. More of you, God. Oh, we need more of you, God. We need more of you, Jesus. More of you, God. More of you. So increase in us. Increase. Increase in us, God. This is our prayer tonight. You increase. We decrease. You increase. You increase. You increase, God. You increase. We decrease, God. We decrease. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Oh, we bless your name, Jesus. We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory, God. We give you glory, God. We give you glory, God. We give you the glory, Jesus. We give you the glory. We give you the glory. We give you the glory, God. We give you glory. We give you glory, God. We give you glory, God. We bless your name, God. We worship you. We adore you. We place none before you tonight, God. You receive the glory. You receive the honor. You receive it. You receive it. Yes, God, you receive the glory. You receive the glory, God. You receive the glory, God. We will not cease in blessing your name, Father. We will not cease in giving you glory, God. With everything we have, we shall bless your name. With all of our being, God, we give you the honor. With all of who we are, God, mind, body, spirit, and soul, we bless your name. We lift our hands. We lift our hands. We lift our voices. We bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 God, hallelujah. We offer to you, God, this sacrifice, God, this sacrifice of praise, God. We bless your name, God. We bless your name, God. We may not feel like it, God, but we bless your name, Jesus. 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 We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory. You are worthy, God. You're worthy, God. You're worthy, God. No matter what happens in our lives, God, that does not change your worth. You are God. You will forever be worthy of the glory. You will forever be worthy of the honor. So we give it to you, God. Whether you answer our prayers or not, you are still worthy. You are still worthy. Yes, you are. So we bless your name, Father. We bless your name, God, that you are so worthy. Nothing that we can do can change your worth, God. You are God. You are God. And to you be all glory. To you be all honor, Father. Yes, to you be all glory. We know the enemy cannot understand our choice to be radical in our praise, God. But we know that our praise confuses him. We know that our praise confuses the enemy. 
he cannot understand why in the midst of our darkest nights we would choose to bless you but this is the choice that we make on tonight God that we will bless your name at all times God that your praises shall continually be in our mouth that our soul makes a boast in you Jesus yes 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 we worship and bow down we kneel before the Lord our maker we bless his name praise the Lord bless the Lord oh my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name yes we bless you you are God and we give you glory our refuge and strength you are a very present help yes a very present help in the time of trouble you are you are a shield God you are a shield and the glory and the lifter of our hands we bless you Jesus we bless you we bless you we bless you we bless you we bless your name Jesus yes you are yes you are worthy you're worthy God you're worthy Jesus yes we give you glory oh we bless your name God we bless your name Jesus we bless your name Jesus we bless your name Jesus we give you glory God. we give you honor we give you praise we thirst for you Jesus 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 as the deer pants after the water brooks go so our souls thirst after the living God We thirst for you, God. Only you can satisfy. Fill this house. We can feel your presence. Walk with us. 
Dispatch your angels now, God. Release your angels. to your people, God. War angels on our behalf now. We ask of you, God, send your ministering angels. Send your warring angels, God. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. If you don't understand what's happening now, just put a praise on your lips. Just give him glory. Something is happening in the spiritual realm right now. You may not be able to comprehend it. But don't stand there and just stare. Open up your mouth and release worship. Open up your mouth and bless his name. If you don't know what to say, just say Jesus. Just say hallelujah.
big kid. Won't you stand up on your feet all over the room? For some of us, we've been asking God for more. For some of us, we've been asking God for manifestation of certain things in our lives. But we have yet to open up our mouths. We have yet to open up our mouths. Yet we're asking God to do so much for us. But we're not willing to partner with him. So I want to challenge you. There are some things that he wants to break off of our lives. There's some things that he wants to manifest in us, but we have yet to release a praise that would create a space for him to come and move on our behalf. So I want to challenge you tonight as I challenge myself for these next few moments. Won't you open up your mouth in this place and release a worship and a praise like never before? Won't you open up your mouth and give him glory? You want to see him move and partner with him. Let's partner with him tonight and give him glory. Worship him, the chains are falling. It's breaking now. I wish you could see it. Father, we bless you. Open up your mouth, hallelujah, 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 Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, we give you glory, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sweet Holy Spirit, thank you for your presence. We've been praying, we've been so, now we're crying, heaven sent the rain. We've been praying, we've been so, now
That's where we are now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we didn't pray, we didn't sow. And I'm telling you, rain is about to fall. Glory to God. But we cannot leave the posture of praying and crying and sowing and praying and crying and sowing. We can't leave that posture. We got to stay in that place that we're crying for the rain, crying for the rain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We've been praying. We've been sowing. Now we're crying, heaven said, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Just one more time. We've been praying, saying, we've been praying, we've been so. Now we're crying, heaven said. There's a sweet anointing. Glory to God. Sweet anointing. Sweet anointing. We make no excuse for this presence and for this place that we're in. Glory to God. So now, God, we thank you for touching all over this room. Thank you for your presence that's here, that's filling this room. Thank you for filling every space. Every void being filled. I just felt the glory of God. Hallelujah. Wonderful glory. That's good. Yeah. Thank you, God. Heaven's hand. Most of you may not even know this song, but can you just lift your hand? We've been praying. We've been so. Now we're crying. Heaven said. Even if you don't know it, that should make sense to you. Yeah, 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 yeah. We've been praying. Make it bigger for me, please. We've been so. Now we're crying. Big on the screen. Heaven sent the rain. That's all you gotta know. Say it again. We've been praying. We've been praying. We've been so. Now we're crying. Heaven send the rain. We've been praying. We've been so. Now we're crying. A little bigger on the screen, you're almost there. Yeah, yeah, about ten more times bigger. We've been praying, we've been sowing, now we're crying. Heaven said the rain. Your Bible says if you sow in tears, you'll reap with joy. Come on, say it again. Say, we've been praying, we've been sowing, now we're crying. Heaven said. All right, we're going to say it again. We're going to say it again. We're going to say it. We've been praying. We've been so. Now we're crying. Heaven save the rain. Yes, sir. I feel that in my spirit, man. I feel that. And uh, I need you to understand what was happening just now. And some people were saying, why Pastor Denzel don't come out? Why he don't come out? Because, and even before I was singing that particular song, the reason I, wasn't, I didn't come out is because it is so necessary for us now to stay in the posture that says that we're expecting this cloud to burst. We're expecting the rain to come. Many of us have been pressured on every side. I, I, I feel you. I feel you. I was watching the uh, intercessors chat um, 
their, their chat group and, and the pressure is being sensed on every side. But keep on praying, keep on sowing, and keep on crying. Most importantly, keep on expecting that he's going to send the rain. He's going to send the rain. I, I, I am encouraged. I'm telling you, I am so encouraged now that rain is about to come. And here's the thing. Here's the thing. Don't tell the rain how to come. Don't tell the rain how to come. Just expect the rain to come. Because harvest is upon this people. Harvest. Money, man. I'm talking about money, man. Money is small things, man. We got God. When you got God, you got money. I'm talking about the harvest of the peace, the joy, the, the, that, that, that level of sanity that you lose. I feel like you're losing your mind. That how, we could get money, man. Money is easy. But, but having money in your mind still all jacked up ain't no good to you. We believe in God for the kind of harvest that brings a peace of mind, that brings stability, that brings balance, that brings not happiness but joy on the inside of us where we can create our own rain and make our own self happy. We can make ourselves happy when we get this harvest. Someone give God a praise right there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord tonight. And uh, I am, I am, I am, I am such in the place of expectation that um, I really at the point when I came out uh, um, earlier and I saw about six, six, seven people here, I was so excited. I said, that's cool, but that's cool because I'm so ready for what God has to do. That I ain't got no time to look at no heads. I ain't trying to count nothing right now. I got to the office and I felt glorious. I said, God, that's all I need. I just need to sense the glory of God because something is breaking for this people. And, and I, I wish I had two or three to agree, but even if you don't agree, it don't matter. That something is breaking. Something is breaking. Something is breaking. For six years, we didn't try to excite you, and we ain't going to start now. If you catch it, you catch it. If you don't catch it, we're going to keep on moving. But something is breaking. Something is being birthed, and something is breaking. Hallelujah. Those of you that just caught that, come on, give God another, another release of praise. If you just caught that, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want us, I know it's already 8 o'clock and we should be moving um, into our teaching because it's getting late. Uh, but I want us, please, I need you to come with me. Come with me. I, I need us to, to take our faith down to, down to Knoxville, Tennessee, to Pastor Perry. Um, just got off the phone. I was part of why I was in so long. I was on the phone with Pastor Perry's wife. Um, didn't know this, just found this out. He was in hospital from Thursday. Um, those of you who've been here, for a little more than a year, you would know Pastor Perry. He was here at the same time last year. Um, around the January of last year, he was with us. That's my friend and brother, very close brother, um, partner in ministry. He was my pastor for my last two years in the U.S. And um, we have become knitted. Uh, he was in hospital. Um, they gave him, he, he ran in on Thursday night. He was sharing with his wife, actually ministering to his wife, ministering to her and, and prophesying over her. And he just, in the middle of that, just bent over and began hollering in pain. And I had to call the ambulance for him. Um, gave him, in the space of two, three hours, gave him like four doses of, of um, morphine. And nothing helped. And then they took it up to something that's four times stronger. She gave me the name of it. And then they gave him three doses of that. Nothing helped. And so he was there totally medicated and still hot crying in pain and um, they eventually eventually I think she said about eight to nine hours later they got the pain to subside a little and um, and like two days ago it just stopped and they have yet to figure out what it was they don't know what happened they're clueless the doctors have run cat scans have run all kind of scans all kind of tests on him and they don't know what's happening they don't know what happened. And so, of course, the family's not in a place of peace at all. Because there's this, what was that? Or what is this? And so I want us to pray. I want us to take a few moments here. He's our brother. Um, we are connected, so connected, with um, Word of Life Ministries, Knoxville, Tennessee. Pastor Perry, Bishop Perry. And so I want us to get together. He was here. He's ministered to many persons in this room and prophesied to many of us. And the word that God has spoken through him has come to pass. 
And so I want us to come together and really believe God for that man of God. I sense the enemy is attacking. Just sounds like the enemy. Sounds like the spirit of infirmity. He's trying to take our brother. And so I want us just to believe God for Pastor Kevin Perry. Um, just for, like I said, I just spoke to his wife. And um, he's still taking the medication, but he's like a whole lot better than he was. But all they were doing was giving him pain medicine because they couldn't figure out what is going on. They couldn't figure out couldn't figure what's happening. So let's believe God together. Let's believe God together. And so as you, if you were praying for me, or if you were praying for a loved one, someone personal or close to you, I want you to apply that same kind of faith now. I'm asking everyone, please, everyone, let's connect together in this prayer. Some of you saying, I don't know him. That's all right. Let's believe God together. Let's get on one accord. I need every one of us to connect together in prayer. Let's pray. His name is Pastor Bishop Kevin Perry. Let's pray together for Kevin Perry. Everybody, let's pray together. Come on, let's pray. Father, let me I need some, uh, the effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous. Let's be effectual. Let's be fervent and believe God. Father, we pray now. God, we lift up your servant Kevin now. God, now we pray, Father God, for him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. We thank you for his walk before you. We thank you for the anointing on his life. Thank you, God, for all of the dark, horrible places that you've brought him from, the things that you've delivered him from and brought him to this place of serving you and walking before you. God, we thank you, God, for the plans that you've set for his life for the ministry that he is birthed and the things that he's doing in the kingdom for his activity in the kingdom of God God what he's doing to claim back young men and young women from the pits of hell the fact that he's going to places where other ministers are not going thank you father for his life and ministry now God we know we know that the enemy is not pleased with his work the enemy is not pleased God with his determination with his focus on the assignment that you've given him and so father God we know that this is an attack that the enemy has launched against him to distract, to stop, to hinder the move of God on his life. But right now we curse it in the name of Jesus. Satan, the Lord rebuke you in Jesus' mighty name. And the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ be against you right now. We curse you now, spirit of infirmity. We send you back to the spits of hell from whence you came. Every demonic force that has been launched against this man of God, we send it back to the pits of hell now in Jesus' name. Even now, every point of access that they got to his life, we seal now with the blood of Jesus Christ. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Take up your weapons and flee. Every one of your underlings that you've set, even in the ministry, even on, in the yard, around the house, in his children, those access points, we close them off now in the name of Jesus the Christ. And we declare the blood of Jesus Christ covers him. God, send your warring angels even around the bed that he's in right now. Let them fight on his behalf. We say, come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Rest heavily upon this man like never before. We declare 2016 going to be a year of great victory for Word of Life. It's going to be a year of great victory, Father, for Kevin Perry, Natalia Perry, the children, Father. We thank you. This is going to be a year of great acceleration and great accomplishment for the kingdom of God. So now, God, not by might, not by power, but by your spirit, we thank you for raising him up. For raising him out of this bed of attack. Glory to God. When the enemy has launched his attack. I thank you, God, that you're going to get the glory. That a greater glory is going to be released through his life. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. Your word declares, thank you, Holy Spirit. That if a thief be found, he'd be made to pay seven times over what he stole. And so, God, I pray for seven times return for this man of God. In the name of Jesus. For the woman of God, seven times, sevenfold return. In the name of Jesus. What the enemy meant for bad, God, you're going to get greater glory out of it. 
and we bless and magnify your name. It is so. It is so. It is so. Cover the children now. Strengthen Natalia Perry. Strengthen that daughter, God. Give her strength. Give her wisdom as she walks through this season. Even as she is searching God, trying to hear your voice. Speak to her clearly. Speak to your, your servant, your prophet. Speak to her. Give her direction, Father. We anoint the house. We anoint the yard. We anoint the vehicles now. The church, the property, everything that touches them, Father. We anoint it. The blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ. And Father, we bless you. We call it done. For the glory of God. God, you get the glory. You get the glory. In Jesus' name, lift your voice and give God a praise one more time again. Come on, let's give God glory one more again. Hallelujah. Sweet Holy Spirit, I feel the power of God. Hallelujah, I feel the power of God. I posted this last night on Facebook for those that saw it, and I want to say it here. God said to me last night, he says, you're praying, you're crying, but how bad do you want it? So God said to me, he said, how bad do you want it? And my question to you, those of you in this room who this applies to, how bad do you want it? How bad? Yeah, we understand it's not by self-effort. We understand that. But even Jesus himself mortified his flesh. Even he, he ran away from the crowd. After doing a full day of ministry and pouring out into people, he would go into desert places and go on his face before his father. So how bad do you want it? How much of your schedule are you willing to adjust to get it? Who are you willing to cut off to get it? Who are you prepared to, to purge out of your space to get it? How far are you willing to go? What are you willing to spend? How bad do you really want it? How bad? How bad do you want it? This is not a question for your neighbor or for your spouse. It's a question for you. How bad do you want it? Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Let's go to the word of God. Amen. It's such a, it's such a, uh, It's so easy to just go ahead and make altar calls and just start laying hands and pray. But I don't want us to get there. I don't want us to be that kind of church where, where every service we get together, we lay hands, lay hands. People pass out, people fall out. People experience the presence and the move of God. And that becomes the routine. Come, pastor, do it again. Come on, do it again. Come on, do it again. No, we got to grow in the things of God to the point where you become the ones who are laying hands with somebody else. Say amen to that. Yeah, so I, I'm learning. Not that I'm, I'm not quenching the flow of the Spirit of God. Definitely not. But we must grow up in the things of God that we are not always desperate. Come, Pastor, pray for me. Because I'm, I'm starting to realize that um, this fire that I've been feeling for these last two years now, this can happen every day and all day. And so I'm starting to get used to that place where actually... This is, uh, sounds a bit presumptuous, but Enoch didn't have the Holy Ghost, but he walked with God. I won't get to the place where I walk with God, Timmy. I just walk with God. Because Enoch, he had the Holy Ghost. He had Jesus. But yet still, it was said of him that he walked with God. Walked with God so much, now I say I want this part. He walked with God so much till he didn't die. He was taken. It would be cool, but it would scare you all. So I, I ain't praying for that part. You know, because y'all y'all get buried. You know. Pastor gone. He was walking and he's like getting higher and higher and higher and higher. Then he's just gone. You know. If that happens, I, I'm cool with it, but I want to walk with God. Anybody else want to walk with God? Let it be said of you that you walk with God. Hallelujah. When they see you, they see God. When they hear you, they hear God. You become that intertwined with God. Like Adam was. It never ceases to amaze me, Sonia, that, that part about the scripture where it says that whatever Adam named the animals, God agreed with him. That's so crazy to me. 
It's like God is talking, we say amen. But with Adam, Adam talked. And God said amen. And Mado, that's off the chain right there. I won't get there. I won't talk. Like I won't say, like God, like make Pinky a millionaire. And God said, I didn't really plan on doing that. But since you say it, amen. And God just say amen. Huh? See if I had to call your name, you'd have clapped this now. Look at this pinky, you ain't clapped this now. Y'all, y'all hating on pinky. Lord God. Yeah, wake on that day. You want to get anointed to be on your past day. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. All right, let's go to the word of God. I, um, I'm going to find a scripture to give you because I really ain't got none of that. Um, there you go, John 3 and 16. Never fail. You can never lose. Don't get what you're preaching, you can't miss. John 3. Tree, T R E E, John 3 and 16. Hallelujah. Yes, sir, Jesus. Yeah, I, I feel that today, I, I feel that, that um, the sentiment of that song is as all day long I've been with Jesus. I feel that way. I feel that way. It's a good feeling. Yeah, y'all know it because y'all young. It ain't that old, but y'all just that young. Hallelujah. I don't tell me know it. Tell me ready now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Karen know it too. <laughs> All day long, I've been with Jesus. All day long, my lips. Yeah, yeah. All day long. My heart, my soul's been lifted in worship all day long. I have been. The young folks like it. Sing it again so they can hear it again. All day long, I've been with Jesus all day long. My lips have Rhythm. My heart, my soul's been lifted in a worship all day long. I am with him. Now let's go to the next part and then mess the whole song up. So I'm gonna go there. Let's stop right there while we're ahead. No, no, don't do that. Everybody's everybody's go there and then they go, no way should I? Yeah. No, don't do that. Just stay with it all day long. Yeah, to go to the next part of the song, you can you can file that up. I know I said John 3 and 16, but um, go to um, Psalm 46. The 46th division of the Psalm. I hope to get here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Psalm 46, verse number 10. When you got it, say I got it. Um, let me look at the preceding and the proceeding. Because some of y'all didn't read your Bible all week. So let me give y'all a little more reading to do. Mm-hmm. You know what? Let's read the whole thing. I said verse 10, but let's read the whole thing because this can be some of your scripture reading for the week. So let's read the whole thing. We believe the Lord Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son of God. He gave his life as a ransom on the cross of Calvary, making eternal and abundant life available to all that believe in his triumph of sake for the redemption of mankind. We believe that Jesus Christ continually speaks to us through the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. receive the word. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. God, I'll preach by itself. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be removed. Good God Almighty. 
and the, though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, we can sit in the middle of that. Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling there of Selah. Calm down. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her. Someone say, that's me. Mm -hmm, talking about me. And that right early. Yeah, he ain't gonna take long. He can be there quick. The heathen raged. The kingdoms were moved. He utters his voice and the earth melts. Glory to God. The Lord of hosts is with us. Tell him that me and me. Mm -hmm. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Pause and soak on that for a second. Now we'll see the mean. Then verse 8 says, Come behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease to the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Therefore, be still. Know that I am God. Isn't it crazy that he has, he has this psalmist writing about him. But in verse 10, he says, hold on. Let me let you know. This ain't him talking. This is me talking. Oh, shucks, man. Y'all slow. Y'all slow. Uh, the, 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 the writer is saying God is our refuge. Therefore, we will not fear. And all this kind of stuff. God is in the midst. The Lord of hosts is with us. And God of Jacob is our refuge. Verse 10, God snatches the mic. He, he snatches the mic and says, do it. I'll take it from here. Be still and know that I am God. Isn't it amazing? It is a beautiful picture to see God standing up. Beautiful but terrible. To see God standing up, taking the mic and say, I got it from here. Hold on, Psalmist. I take it from here. Be still and know that I am God. And guess what? I will be exalted. Y'all can fool around if y'all want. I will be exalted among the heathen. And I will be exalted in the earth and they says take him and then dude says the lord of hosts is with us the god of jacob is our refuge ain't that off the chain right there we should give god a praise on that word just by itself right there hallelujah glory to god amen um go to three people tell them welcome to the life experience and have sit back down because it's late three people three people one two three amen Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. We thank God for all of you in the house tonight. So glad to see all of you that are here. God bless you. Can I go here? Let's see. All right. Right sound, man. This is like a low hum somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Low, low, let me see if sound man can find it. Thank you. All right. All right. <laughs> this is, believe it or not, this scripture probably doesn't um, support that, but this is really still on the love talk. Um, we, we began the love talk right before. This is the problem when you get blessed too much. When you get blessed too much and you get one, one new time piece and all your little stuff has come to your phone, come to your wrist. You know, so that's the problem. I was ministering somewhere this week and I was saying something. And somebody, what's happening? I said, God, it's <laughs> this, this watch is not good for preaching. Right. <laughs> it's a nice watch. Um, but I, I'm, I'm grateful to God for my eye watch. I got an eye watch, by the way. Someone gave it to me. Ain't God good? But somebody kind of buy it for me. It's like, came with the box. It's brand new. 
Hallelujah. Amen. God is kind. You know, I like things. I like things, right? I, I like things. I'm not a pastor in denial. I like things. That's why I make sure I live right. You know, I live right. So things don't have me, but I still like them, though. All right, let's, let's, let's go here. We told you several things about love last week. Um, this is Valentine, Love Month. We do this every Valentine, and I try to, like, end it within Valentine. Um, uh, last week, we kind of ran over some things that uh, we have been saying every year, and we, we um, make it plain to those that have been here for a little while that we still do it because there are people who haven't been here all this time, and so for some of you, it sounds like, man, I've had it before, maybe they should just leave me here. Okay. All right. Um, for, for, for some of us, for some of us, we've heard it, we've heard it before, and so we get comfortable having heard it before, but you don't ever want to get to a place where you get so familiar with the Word of God that you, that you say, well, I know that, all right? Because God will always breathe something to you, and not only will He breathe something to you, but He will also empower you for a situation that you don't even know coming. See what I'm saying? All right? So, so number one, this is not a tell them kind of teaching. This is to us. Number two, um, receive it, even if you think you know it, receive it, because you may need it real soon, sooner than you think. And that happens all the time. People sit in here, and they hear it. Those are thinking, well, what do you say? Let's go up. What do you say, buddy? All right, all right. Good to see you, buddy. You're the free board, right? All right. You're back here now, you just pass it through. Just pass it through. Solid, solid. All right, man. Good to see you, buddy. My soldier. All right. Um, so, so we want we want to keep our minds in the place that we can receive and our spirits open to hear what God is saying. Um, last week we gave you the definition of love. Y'all know my definition of love. Love said what matters to you matters more. What matters to me. We went through that, and then we told you also about um, knowledge, commitment, and what? <coughs> passion. Knowledge, commitment, and passion. Those are the three ingredients to healthy love. To having a healthy love relationship with anybody, there needs to be those three. Even in your relationship with God, we told you this, there must be the three, knowledge, commitment, and passion. Whenever they occur out of order, there will be disorder. They are supposed to occur in order, and they should be balanced. We can take this and apply this to all types of scenarios. In, in, in your relationship with God, there should be knowledge first. What happens with a lot of us is, that we go to a church and we get excited about the music and about the praise team and about the preacher. I like how he's preached. I like how the church lay out. The, the color's pretty. And then you get excited and then you say, that I'm a Christian now. You, you, the frills get you. You get won by the frills. And so you, you commit to this thing because of the frills. And then you make this covenant, you know, because I'm a Christian now because I love it. You're excited. You're all caught up in the emotions at the moment. And then down the road, life happens. And when life happened, because you didn't have the knowledge of God, you didn't truly know him the way you're supposed to know him, when life happens, you jump ship. How are we talking? You keep on living. I don't care how deep you are, how old you are. I've been saying this for six years now. Life will happen. You can't duck life. Not life for the Santa. Life. All right? You cannot duck it. It will find you at some place. And if you are not um, anchored with regard to knowledge, when life hits you, it's going to knock you over. And you're going to lose your place. Say amen to that. Amen. All right? So it's very critical that these occur in balance and in order. Um, this, is, this is one of the reasons that I, um, persons have said this to me, that, Pastor, you don't, you don't like work the salvation on the cause that much no more. I don't. I know how. I am gifted at churchology. I know how to do it. I know how to say the words right to make you feel guilty. And even though you save, I may you come and get saved again. Like, you know you live it right, but I'll twist that so good. When I finish you, you come to the altar. I, I know how to do that. But what, what I'm doing there, I'm playing with passion. And that's a problem because I don't want to play you like that. I prefer to have you come here, and I see you in the back there, and look like you're still smoking a little backward, or look like you still your boyfriend dropped you off, he picked you up, and you all two live in the same place, same address, and all that kind of good stuff. I ain't fighting you. What I want to do is get word in you. 
Because if I get enough word in you and that knowledge base is built on the inside of you, then you want, based on knowledge, form commitment. How are we talking? So, so there are many persons who have rebuked and said, oh, you got to do more altar calls. You, needed, you preached down the road, you didn't know altar call. No, I gave them word so they could go home and think about something and ponder on something. Because altar calls, I'm telling you, altar calls are easy. They are easy, and especially for, for salvation. You go, you go, um, like, for me now, when we go to the prison, with, with the prison ministry here, I don't make altar calls. You're going to learn this, those of you who, 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 who is your first time on, on the prison committee, who are in the prison ministry, you're going to learn this. You go to prison, you go to jail, and you do an altar call, they will respond. Everybody wants Jesus. I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to crack joke on them, but that kind of atmosphere, you do an altar call for salvation, people can respond. We go every month now. And so um, um, there, are, there are about 20 of them girls, they're waiting on us. And they can be in every service. And if I make an altar call every service, so I stop. I don't altar call no more. I'm praying, God, let your power touch them. Giving them word, giving them word. Let that word soak on them, man. And, and when I hear the chaplain call me back the week after and say, boy, this is talking about our word. I say, yeah, that's what we want. That's what we want. You know, we were down there one time and um, um, Gia was in there and they, somebody called Gia and said, Gia, boy, they're talking about what's in your pot. She didn't even know what I preached. She wasn't even there. And, and somehow she made contact with somebody there in the prison and they said, boy, your pastor was talking about them pot. <laughs> that means that word, so, that was a good word too, what's in your pot. Oh, that was a good one. That, I, I had spoken that prison day. I just, do, I, just do, I just do good in prison. I just be smoking in prison, man. I, 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 like it's been like another kind of thing, man. She belong in jail. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> and, and this happens every time. And I guess, I guess it is because, you know, this Matthew 10 is manifesting. Matthew 10, Jesus says, don't take no script. Don't take nothing. Every time we get to prison, ask them. Every time we get to prison, we get in the back of my sack. Anybody get a Bible? <laughs> I just borrow a Bible before the bus reach. Uh, you know, we bad the bus, come and carry it in. I get back, okay, I got something right there. Fine, you go with that. And every single time, God breathes on it, and it's a powerful word being released. But the point I'm getting to is that knowledge, knowledge is where it's at, that knowledge is the foundation. All right? Knowledge is the foundation. So we should, every relationship, it must be grounded, it must be hinged and fastened on the foundation of knowledge. Don't do nothing until you know. Don't sign that until you read. And if you don't understand, ask. You know, can I tell you, this, this whole knowledge, commitment, passion goes with everything. goes with every single thing. That um, some of us, we, we locked in all kinds of agreements and we know what it's like. I got a wake-up call um, a month ago that brought tears to my eyes. I got a wake-up call. I was crying because I signed an agreement. Uh, how long now? 10 years ago, almost 11 years ago, I signed an agreement, and for the first time, I read it a month ago. And I say, well, what the? If I didn't read this 11 years ago, what happened was you saw something, you was excited, and you say, I want that. Talk to me, man. Or it's just me. I know what I wanted, and they said, listen, to get it, now you got to do this and that. I don't care, man, I, I want that. So I can get it? Yeah, you can get it. Good. Because all I want here is, I can get it. You tell me I can get it, I can get it. I'll fill in the blanks later. And later, later was a month ago, and I read, and I was, no, literally, I called Robin. Robin said, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. She said, boy, you, you didn't know that? I said, no. I said, you didn't know? She said, no. I said, oh, boy. <laughs> you know, all of my song. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pains we bear. <laughs> and I should have carried that one to God and pray. I didn't. All because we don't carry. I, I really should take that one to Him. And so it is so important for you to establish knowledge. What are you in right now that you don't know about? What are you in that you have not? Prepared yourself by seeking knowledge. There is no such thing as no good knowledge. 
all knowledge is good. If you're dating someone and some evil godmother that don't like them give you information, keep that. There's no such thing as bad knowledge. It can't happen. Um, I am not afraid to read the book of the Baha'i. I am not afraid to read the stuff about Rastafarianism. Everything I've read of the different religions, all of them make me more Christian. The more I read them, I say, boy, I thank God for Jesus. <laughs> Case in point, I was reading about Haley Selassie um, 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 bread. I was reading, man, because one of my boys, one, one of my boys, he's, he's, he, he's, he locked in, man. He's he rasta for years, you know. You know, don't, you know, don't rasta, don't, don't eat no red meat, don't eat no fowl, nothing like that. He's he solid, he rasta for real. And uh, he said, man, man, rev, read this. So we was going on a job site up in one of the islands. So we were on the plane together. So he gave me the book, and I'm reading on the plane. And I'm reading. So we get to, when we get to our destination, he said, what you think? I said, my God is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I said, you get any more books like this? I read it, I ask this, I need some more books like this. Because I'm reading this book, and the book talks about how Haley Selassie got up every morning and went to Mass. Uh. <laughs> I said, hold on, Haley's going to church? <laughs> so, hold on, y'all worshiping the boy, who used to worship the boy, who I worship? He said, no, but you missing something. I said, no, I missing nothing. I, I said, I, I, I showed him the page. I said, this page said here that every, he used to get, and before he got anything done, he used to spend time in prayer, and he used to go to mass. He used to go to church. So y'all worshiping the boy. Who worshiping the boy that I worship in? Why don't cut that boy out? <laughs> I just go straight to the fellow that he, because I worship in, because me, me and him, me and him, we are, we are on the same page. Y'all lost. So knowledge, knowledge is critical. Knowledge is critical. Like I said, there's no such thing as bad knowledge. Um, don't don't be afraid. As a believer, don't be afraid of knowledge. But also remember now that knowledge, knowledge, kill it, let it kill it. The spirit that gives life. And so make sure as you, whatever you read, you read it through the meter of the spirit of God. You know, um, when you're getting knowledge, you 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 think that it's the person that God has for you. As you are gaining knowledge, people are coming talking to you. And um, let me throw this in here um, in parentheses. Uh, I am afraid of people that are afraid of people who come against what they want to do. I'll say it again. I am afraid of people that are afraid of people that come against what they want to do. When you are scared of people disagreeing with you, I'm scared of you. You should not run from disagreement. You should not be protecting, like you ever see somebody, not, not in this church, but somebody who, who um, they won't get married, and as soon as somebody comes, they, they're chasing them away. They're chasing them. They're scared to even hear someone say, I don't think you should. Anyone that came to me between the period of 2000 2006 when I was getting ready to marry Robin, I entertained them. Everyone. No, because I know what I know. So the fact that you're afraid of someone coming to you with something opposing, it says you don't know what you know. So when you, when you got to build this hedge around you and this fence around you and a wall around that and armed guards around that and tankers around that because ain't nothing coming close. And you got to protect this thing and protect this thing. That means what you got ain't, ain't, ain't solid. Uh, you ever had, uh, I, I hope not, you ever had a, a teacher or professor in school that got annoyed when you kept on asking them questions? That's not a good professor. Because now I got to wonder why, why are you getting mad? If you know what you know, why are you getting offended by my questions? Oh, let me walk this a little deeper. Why do you run from Jehovah Witness? <laughs> Beside the time. They, they really, I ain't like to think about time. They can pick. Let, let me free myself. 
Let me tell the truth. Week before last, I, I left here. I was not feeling good. What day that was? One day last, week before last. I wasn't feeling good. My throat was feeling a little, little on fire. So I gone home. I dropped Danny, dropped Danny and Naya, and I gone back home. I get home now. I didn't find me. I didn't put my TV on Daystar. Daystar was running one. Running one uh, um, they had a little praise of thorn going on. They had their praise of thorn. So I had some good preachers, man. So I didn't put my TV on Daystar. I didn't go on. I didn't give him a little, give him a little vitamin C and give him a little orange, and I didn't lay everything out. <laughs> I get ready. I didn't lay everything out. I didn't close the blinds. <laughs> Drapes close everything. This is, I call Robin. Robin, I am home. Call me at 2.28. Time for me to get Denny. Call me before that. After I talk to Robin, phone off. Phone off. Everything shut down. I hear a doorbell ring. I ain't going to listen to the tape night see that. Man, I tiptoe. <laughs> I, no, I tiptoe. I, and they, and they, they are so persistent, man. Bing, bing. I close the room door soft, 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 soft. Because I would have made a door slap. <laughs> Turn the knob to make sure it don't, it don't make the sound. So I turn the knob, then I let the door touch, then I release it slowly. <laughs> I on your run today. <laughs> but when, that's not the point I'm trying to make. When you know what you know, <laughs> when you know what you know, there's no need to run. There's no need to get argumentative and get defensive. I don't think y'all two is a good match. Why? <laughs> don't you ain't got to go through all that. No, I want to know why. You should too. No, because like marriage is for life. Oh, I no, Pastor, you show yourself. No, man, tell me something. What you see? Tell me. No, it may not change what I see, but it'll help me what I see. I say, don't be scared. Don't be scared, man. Tell them come. Tell them bring it. Delta, I know y'all next week. Next week's our day. Don't be scared, Delta. You're straight. You know, let me talk, but you know. That. You know, you know what you know. I, I, I've, I've been saying this for, 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 for time now, for time now, for a long time now. My, I, I have always done well in school. I've always done well. I have an excellent memory. Um, that's one of the things. I, I was a horrible student. I didn't study well at all. And I will not allow my children to study the way I studied. I studied horribly. Um, but I was blessed with a good memory. I had a good memory. And the second thing about me is that I made sure I knew what I knew. That sounds so simple. But it's so critical. I knew what I knew. When it's exam time, I watch guys for the exam. They get through the book and they try to learn everything. That ain't me. I learned that. Bang. Cut that. Got it? Got it? Mm, make sure. Got it. Psh, got it. Now they be like, Dancy, you, you, you wouldn't call 118? No, I ain't get that far. But now I'll be on the test. I said, bro, I, I, I got it. You know, because we had, we had this class in, in COB. Um, there was like, we had to do all the questions in the book. Our homework book was like this thick. Not, not the textbook, our book. Literally, it was that. I kid you not. I still have it home in Seabreeze. Just because I, I want people to see it. Because we had to do all this, right? And this guy, Daniel, Dr. Donko, he's a crazy dude. Uh, um, he, he, all these homework questions, so you have like, um, probably like 300 questions you've worked out inside this thing. And he picks 30 of them randomly for your homework grade. So if you don't do all, that's your business. He'll just pick randomly. Uh, let's do from chapter 10. Let's do number 18. Let me see. Oh, you didn't do number 18. Zero. That's his count. He's a crazy dude. So <laughs> we had to do all this. So we do all this stuff. And so, I mean, the guys who tried it, so time for the final, they get through the whole book. I can do that. That's too much to know. So I knew what I knew. And when you know what you know, more often than not, that's all you need to know. So I graduated with a summa cum laude and things like that, 3.8 and 3.9 and 4.0. I don't know if that's smart. I just knew what I knew. Like cramming for me and like cramming for everybody else. Cramming for everybody's like, they just cramming for me. Time for that, man. I knew what I knew. You got to get to the place where you know what you know. Like, like, ask, ask me Peggy. Ask me 
what I feel about the premillennial second coming of Jesus Christ. Ask me. <laughs> I don't feel nothing about it. I don't know about it. I have feelings. Because I ain't I never really study that. So if you want to like talk end time theology and eschatology, you need another church. I go to John Hagee. <laughs> go to them. If that's your passion, and you want to be a part of the church to teach you about Megiddo and Armageddon and Gog and Magog and you want to learn about those stuff, I ain't the man. You go find you want church that deal with that. They run you somewhere where they like them kind of things. So do you believe, are you a premillennialist or are you a postmillennialist? How do you believe? Do you believe in the thousand, thousand year reign? You believe it's coming before the thousand years? A thousand years? We just lived that long? <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. How, how, how do you think about rapture? How's rapture going to work? Do you know the word rapture is not in the Bible? I know now. <laughs> so I, I've been confronted with all this kind of stuff. How are you calling yourself a pastor? And you know it's, 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 I, I don't call myself pastor. My, my numbers call me pastor. <laughs> That'll show you. <laughs> so I know what I know. You want to talk glory? Come talk to me. You want to talk change in this nation? Come talk to me. You want to talk Holy Ghost? Let's talk. You want to talk worship? Let's talk. You want to talk things that we can use now? I got it. When I gained a soldier who, who smoked a little beady, he really don't care about Megiddo. Or Armageddon. He on that run. He say, well, I, you know. Now, one or two of them on that run, and when they on that run, I let them talk. I said, but you smart, buddy. <laughs> you get Jesus in your life, but you know what you'll do for the kingdom of darkness? <laughs> All right, so, so, so try not, and, and let, me, let, me, let, me, let me make sure I qualify this. I do intend to get there. I have things that I'm working my way to. Right now, um, in addition to my study of, of more about the glory and about the Holy Ghost and the supernatural, I am like my sub-major right now, my minor, sub-major sub is um, apologetics. I love apologetics. And so I'm starting. Some of you all know what that is. Good. So when I sat on, but it's going to be surprised. Uh, <laughs> but but I, 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 I always loved apologetics, but I had no time to deal with it because I was dealing with supernatural and the glory and stuff like that. But now I'm starting to go back to my little sub-major, some call it minor, and deal with apologetics so we can eventually get to that place. Um, and then I intend to eventually get to end times, the apocalypse. and I, I intend to deal with that. You know? So if you ask me what I think about them, them, them three blood moons, When I have, every time every time I hear them talk about the people of the moon, I think about one thing. One day soon, the moon is going to go down in blood. I don't know that song. Y'all know that song. I just go every time. Yeah. Don't let the sun, y'all know that, go down on me. Yeah, when the fellow gets to that thing with the blood, he's go high. The moon is going to go down in blood. That's what it's <laughs> So every time I have these three blood moon, that's where my mind is go. <laughs> right to that song. So if we talk, I'll be singing the moon. <laughs> Pray my strength the Lord. All right. So knowledge, no, I can't stress this enough. Um, because we can hear this plenty, plenty, plenty. You will hear this and hear this and hear this and hear this. And the more you hear this, you still ain't gonna do it. <laughs> but I gotta keep on saying it. I gotta keep on saying it. Hopefully you will catch this. But Pastor Man, I'm gonna move on. No, because y'all still ain't doing it. Y'all still having sex with people y'all don't know. I came out of nowhere, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah the, the key to having sex with somebody, you got to know them. You got to know them. When you do that, you break the laws of God. Not just fornication, but you break the order. See, 
this greatness bigger than just fornication? You know, because Paul, Paul, Paul had declared up like, hold on, man, hold on. Y'all think fornication is just sin. Y'all seeing fornication is just sin. That's what y'all seeing. Y'all seeing sin. And so you figure, I can repent when I sin and I stray. Paul had to go and then break this down. He says, no, when you sleep with somebody, you become one with them. And he says, you, you got to be careful because when you tie that knot, that hard to loose. You could get married 10 years later and still that knot ain't loose yet. And that knot ain't cheering. Don't nobody fool you. That ain't cheering. No. So I ain't talking about if you have a child for the person. No, you could not have a child with the person, but that knot is so, that tie is so tight. And you're going down the road and you're trying to move on with your life and trying to serve God and trying to do ministry, but that knot's still there. See? So, so, so this, you got to know certain things. It's true be told, forget the Holy Ghost, forget being spiritual. If you knew more about them, you wouldn't slap with them. Talk to me, man. Forget the Bible. Forget speaking in tongues. Forget praying in the Holy Ghost. If you knew then what you know now, as crazy as you was, you would have said, no, no, I fool that. If you knew how dizzy they really was, you would have saved some car tires, windshield. <laughs> you would have been pretty. You would have saved yourself a lot if you only know. Some people who cry, the people who laugh and loud, they're the ones. The ones with a slight smile right now. They're the ones right now. <laughs> Don't mind the ones who laugh and loud right now. It's the people already in this room right now who say, hmm, 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 hmm. They're the ones. They're the ones who they really know what's going on. They know what's going on. <laughs> hey, boy, Pastor, you preaching good, boy. <laughs> right. <laughs> You preach it good. Yeah. So so we have to take the time. And knowing takes time. Knowing takes time. You and the, the truth is, knowing never ends. It never ends. And this is why you gotta put the investment in, in the front end. Because it's gonna continue to evolve. But when you establish a good enough foundation relative to knowledge, then you stand a better chance down the road. Now, I, now the, 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 the first thing about those three is that they must be in order. The second thing about those three is that they must be in balance. Order is first. So for those that are single, order is first. Those who are single, you need to know the order. Knowledge, commitment, then passion. For those persons that are married, because I don't want people to think that this is only a single people talk, and so the married folks say, oh, they're not going to be today. No, for the married people now, your thing now is balance. That you must balance the knowledge with the commitment and with the passion. What happens in a lot of mature relationships, I use the term mature loosely, people that are married, is now the focus becomes commitment. Commitment becomes it. And so they're there for, they're there for the sake of commitment. Passion is gone. In the early phases, we try to tie that passion horse down. Tie him. We choke him with a short chain. You want a long chain because you'd be surprised to do it. He's very, he's very flexible. So you put him on a short chain and you lock that joker down. Lock that horse down. What, uh, um, what, it, what single people try to do is lose that horse. Single people, they can lose that horse called passion. They can lose him. And they don't know he's a wild horse. And he's an untamed horse. And so once you lose him, you can't control him. You need a master called the Holy Ghost to bring him under subjection once you lose him. I'll say that again. Those of you that have loosed him prematurely, you need the Holy Ghost. To bring that horse back in. You cannot do it by yourself because you ain't got it. Only the Holy Ghost. You could, you could, you will ride him for a little while and think you got him? Okay, he's tame now. And he'll see something because he, he's tripped easy because he, 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 he's still wild. He'll see something, then he'll go wild again. Only the Holy Ghost can bring that fella in. How y'all doing? All right. Now, 
Now, here's it. So, so single people like to lose that horse. The married people like to tie him. And that's where marriages get in trouble. Because we tie up the horse called passion. Now, some of y'all say this ain't necessary. I've counseled people um, um, before I was pastor. I started counseling people when I was like 16, 17. I don't know how I got counseling people who were married. A little boy, I counseled people who were married. And it happens all the time. And you would sit them down, you tell them, you talk about, talk about sex, and you say, listen now, um, how are you? Um, I tell you things. Um, when is that train trade on Tuesday night? Um, huh? Yeah, because now I got to be careful now. I, 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 didn't, I didn't look around the room. No. Uh, I don't know what to do. <laughs> keep keep on going or I huh? Who's it? <laughs> Lisa say your ma. <laughs> Lisa look at you and say your ma. <laughs> So we have these sessions, and we say to, to um, dude and girlfriend, let's talk about um, chocolate. And they say, ah, oh, Rev, don't worry about that. Chocolate straight. Because I like chocolate, she like chocolate, we chocolate freaks. So, don't talk it as a bad one. <laughs> Who picked chocolate? Karen. Karen, why listen to Karen? I know why I listen to Karen, but chocolate. <laughs> so, 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 and they. That's how you use chocolate? That, that sounds familiar too, you know. That, that sounds like you said before. Yeah. So, anyway, let's say chocolate. Uh, so, 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 you, they tell you, no. Mm -mm, don't worry about that. That's straight. Everybody we, everybody, we counsel. Yeah, I remember now. Yeah, I did, I did do that. I thought, <laughs> light chocolate, dark chocolate. Anyway, so we, <laughs> so you tell them, you cross, pastor. Mm -mm, mm -mm. This, this one, he get diabetes. <laughs> Love it. And the say, listen to me. Even you single couple people listen to me, getting ready to get married. Listen to me. Something about doing it God's way and covenant. All of a sudden, your appetite for chocolate, chocolate starts to change. Now listen to me. Listen to your pastor. That you would never believe because of how much your drive is. You would, no, that's straight. Oh, don't worry about that. We ain't got to talk about that. Pastor, what's the next topic? All the time. I get it. All the time. All the time. That's straight. That's straight. And that goes from both sides, male and female. And then, so you can see, what you don't realize is that once you do it God's way, then the devil says, I got to break it. See, before you got married, before you did it God's way, you was illegal. You was in his domain. And so he wasn't fighting you. That was cool. He wanted you to like chocolate. And so he was doing things, dangling all kinds of stickers in front of you. Stay there, man. Stay on your place, man. Y'all making this harder than this need to be. This ain't gotta be this hard. I, mean, I think it's so hard now. I'm so scared. I, my brain's smoking right now. I try to figure how you do this. Help me, Holy Ghost. Um, and, and, and so you, you, but it's illegal. It's illegal. Come on, come on. Talk to me, man. How is it that 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 there are men? that are married to pies and go there with junglers. You see their wife, he'd be like, ooh -wee. And you see that thing, he'd be like, nah, come on. <laughs> I ain't even ain't smiling. I ain't even ain't smiling. And you try to leave, what? The devil! will get in there. 
Because he sees it being done God's way. He said, no, I can't have this. Because he also realizes that the highest form of agreement on earth is not a pastor and his members. It's not in prayer meeting when the intercessory team get together. That's not the highest form of agreement. There's a form of agreement that is no higher. You can get no higher than that on earth. That's between a husband and a wife. That's the highest form of agreement on earth. Nothing is higher than that. And your Bible says in Matthew chapter 18, if two of them come together, yeah. agree on anything, God has to do it. Close that car. That, that's the highest form of agreement on earth. And the devil knows that if they perfect this agreement, they'll destroy me. I can't get in their house. I can't get on their children. I can't get in their church because they are together. And so he does everything he can do to break that up, to bring confusion in that, to make sure they never get as one. He wants to get as one? He know that's one house here at the table list. I can't get them before. Because God got them. Are y'all married and single folk hearing this? Y'all hearing this? Y'all getting this? So this is so critical. So, so, so as, as, you, as you make the bond and make the commitment, now here's the challenge. The challenge is you cannot allow the passion to be locked down. You have to free the passion. Now what, what remains in the middle is covenant, commitment. You do not want your commitment with God with your spouse, with anyone to be solely based on commitment. That sounds good. It sounds real good. I'm in, because, you know what? I ain't like this or whatever. The, I don't like this, but God, I'm in this. I'm going to stay in this. When you live based on your will, you are setting yourself up. Because the person that is solely in it on the basis of commitment, that means they are living based on will. There's no heart connection. And when you function solely on will, you know what comes in after the will? Religion. You, you then function solely on the basis of religion. It's just a practice. And there's no heart involved. Jesus' first teaching that he really did, he tried to pull them from religion, from living based on the will to living based on the heart. <laughs> and you read his Sermon on the Mount, that teaching that he did. He says, you say that if you sleep with a woman that is adultery, he says, if you look at her with desire to have her. Watch this. The people were living, will living. They were living based on will. And so they thought, as long as I can keep my will from sleeping with her, then I am good. Jesus says, no, I have not come to support will living. I have come so you can have heart living. Will living is, once now it's hard if you ain't there, but once you get there, it's easy. Make it, make it even, even more plain. How many of you that fast, begin this year, fast with us in January, and somewhere around day six, seven, eight, nine, ten in the middle there, it wasn't a fast no more. That you were willing yourself not to eat. Your will will take over, and the spiritual element started to dwindle and dwindle and dwindle. dwindle. And by times you get to the very end of the fast, there was no spiritual element at all. It was just, I almost there. I almost there. I almost there. It became a matter of the will. And it was no longer a matter of the heart. That's when marriages die, and, and the sad part about it, those marriages will die, and they'll stay right in the house. Because it's based on will. No, I'm committed to this. I'm going to stay with this. There, I, I don't want any will members of this church. Don't stay there just because you committed to Pastor Denzel. Right? When, when you see me sat in the church, it, that, that's how it's talk. When you see me say again in the church, I dare. I in there. Me? I ain't nowhere. I ain't there. I scared I can't be good. I scared you. No. Because you, you, are, you are here solely on your own volition, as on your own will and on your own ability. I want your heart and spirit connected. I, I, it's kind of, it's similar but it's heavy. Are you all getting this? Is this making sense? 
I'm, I am, I am, I said a few times tonight, I'm afraid of people that are strong-willed. I'm afraid of them because they run a danger of never giving way to the Spirit of God. Strong-willed people always believe they can do it. I got this. I can fix this. I can sort this out. I can work this. <laughs> I just saw a look on somebody's face. I ain't calling names. Yeah. Because some of you may be married to people like that. That's all I can say. Where it's all about my will. And persons that are will oriented, boy, it's so hard to get in the school with the Holy Ghost. Because they'll be in church every Sunday. Be the first one there. Last one to leave. They'll give to every program. Whatever you ask them to do, they'll do. And to the outs from the outside, you'll be like, boy, I don't be like them. Okay, let's make it plain. The Bible talks about them in Revelation chapter 2, I think it is. He says, man, you hate those that call themselves apostles that are not. You love the things that are right. You try to get things in order. He says, but I have an order against you. You have forgotten your first love. So look at. They look at. They look, they look the part. They're religious. A lot of them servicing around this time of year. Under the banner that we call a loan. Lent. Some of you are slow. So there are many people under this banner called Lent. I call it a loan. Lent. And under this Lent, everybody all, they will be all well in zone. I'm more fast getting on right now. You know, we wouldn't drink no liquor. The bars I'm hitting right now. I ain't drinking no liquor. I wouldn't drink no liquor. Mm -mm, mm -mm. 40 days. 40 days. I mean, we had this guy who's built us on site. Man, Lent, this fella's skin would clear right up. I mean, like, I mean, like, you, I mean, for real, like, you, you could see it in his face. I mean, skin getting clear. He looking all healthy. My God. By Pentecost Sunday. <laughs> No, that's, that's long. That's, that's a few days. Man, they, but you see him a little. What's the land gone? Back to that bottle heart again. See, belly start pushing all. He skin them, pause them, start to read that lick and all like that. You know, um, religion is dangerous. Don't allow religion to get to be dominant in your love relationship. Commitment, the will is important, but it cannot be dominant. That's why I said, after priority, with those three, the next is balance. There must be balance. You cannot allow commitment to out. You cannot allow commitment to outdo knowledge, or knowledge to outdo passion. Once you get in this, you got to make sure you maintain the balance, and it's hard. You got to keep on checking it. How much are we talking? How much are we sharing stuff? How much are we doing this? You will need that to keep the relationship going. I wish we had more time. I'm out of time. Um, because um, I want to go even further with this. Uh, can we do this one more week? We can do another week of this? All right, let's, let's go at this another, another week. Because um, I, I believe it's starting to go through. Again through? Yeah. Um, chew on this. Chew on this. Let me just hit the text that I gave you. Hit the text that I gave you. Last week I gave you a list of things that you need to know. Not last week, before last. Things that I need to know. You all together, right? Things that you need to know. You need to make sure you know them. Um, I know I gave it to you. The, the first one was, who is first in their life? Questions you need to ask about knowledge. You need to know who is first in their life was the first one. Number two, how progressive are they relative to their walk with God? How progressive and how aggressive. Do you want God for them more than they want God for themselves? Because sometimes we can be blinded by our desire for them to want God. And we want them to want God so bad that we start telling ourselves that they want God. Let's say it slower. Sometimes we can want God for people so bad that we are so we are so um, caught up with our desire to see them wanting God more, that we can actually tell ourselves that they want God. Hmm. 
And every now and again, you get a pullback. Are they, are they really serious about God? Or are they doing this for me? Number three, and these were not necessarily in order. Number three is, and I, I hope those of you who missed it last week, I'm taking notes and writing these down. You really need to ask these questions. And those who are in relationship now, ask these questions. Pause now. Ask yourself these questions. Number one was, who is first in their life? And don't, don't look for it to just to be, if it ain't God. No. Just see who is first. Because sometimes it may be their ma. Can you compete with that? So, so this question is very important. Listen, don't, don't assume that first question is spiritual. It's all spiritual. It's not spiritual. Literally ask that question. Find out who's first. It might be them. Whether they're just full of themselves. You need to ask that question. And it'll be good for you to ask these of yourself. So you can have a better relationship with yourself. Because some of you need to do this inventory radio to find out who's first in my life. And, the, and truth be told, 11 or 10 of us are in God. Come on, man. If you look at where, where you know how you tell who first? Money, time, effort. Who gets the most of them? Who gets the most of your money, your time, and your effort? Now is God really first? So again, 11 out of 10 of us, it ain't God. So don't you dare be, but you know what? If God is first in their life, they out. You out too. <laughs> so, so don't be, I, I, I this Bible study is supposed to be spiritual. Let's talk sense now. Let's talk sense now. So the answer to this is not, if it ain't God, mm -mm, I out of here. We all hoping we're trying to get to that place. But for the vast majority of us, like I said, 11 out of 10 of us, ain't it? That's what I said. Y'all didn't it the first time. I said it the first time too. I said it both times. <laughs> I guess only you won't call that. They didn't, they didn't hear it. Yeah, yeah. 11 out of 10 of us, mm-mm. No, 11 out of 10. <laughs> that, that is not the case. All right? So, so, so this, is that awesome, this is the awesome analysis to take. Who gets the most of our time, the most of our money, and the most of our effort? <coughs> Number two was who, who, um, how progressive are they relative to their walk with God? This is where you start to get less spiritual. Because the first one wasn't that spiritual. This one is spiritual. Let me go back to the first one. Find out if it's their job. <laughs> women, hear me, hear me, women, hear me, women, hear me, hear me, ladies, hear me, hear me, hear me. You have been trained, you've been conditioned, molded by society, especially Bahamian culture, that you want a man to work hard. And sometimes we can be so consumed with that man that works hard that we overlook the fact that all he does is work. And everybody around you say, oh, that's a good man. Look at that boy, he didn't build an apartment, boy, he didn't get, oh, he got a good government job, go out, that's the one, get him. Um, when the Spirit of God spoke to Paul concerning the needs of a woman, he didn't say the woman needs money, he said the woman needs love. He said, husband, love that woman, yeah? The woman buying the things, man. Love her. And so you all need to go back to that scripture to hear what, what, the, what the Spirit of God says about you. Your greatest desire is love. That's right. Ain't nothing else. Trust me. All those other proclivities that you have, it's because there's a love void that you don't even know how to fill. Wow. I don't care how bad that gal is in the street. The huh? She ain't want no, no, the, all she wants is money. No, no, boo. She's trying to cover up something. When you get down to the core of her, you will find out there's a love void that she just don't know how to fill because she's never been loved properly. And so she figured, let me fill it with these other stuff. She had every woman have this in common. Their greatest desire, their greatest need, the greatest void in their life is to be loved. That's it. It hides well. It'll hide. It'll hide. It'll hide. Every woman got that in common. 
<laughs> need to be loved. Say that. Hmm. That's Ephesians 5, by the way. Husband, love yeah. your wife. Now about verse 20 something. Mm -hmm. All right. And while we are it, um, the greatest need for that man is to be honored. It's the greatest need. It ain't sex. It hides behind sex. It ain't sex. He, he doesn't want to be lord over you, but when he's around, he wants to feel elevated. He, 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 if he could feel high around you, shoot. He, his greatest, that's why he says, his, that's why he says, um, wives, submit to your husband. He needs to feel in that place. He needs to feel. He, he, see, we, we can teach him. Our job, pastors, is teach him that he ain't the boss, but you need to make him feel like the boss. He ain't the boss. But your job is to make him feel like the boss. Don't worry, I can make sure, when I come to you, I can, I can fix that for you. You straight. I can make sure it's balanced that he knows that he ain't the boss. He's not the boss. But it's your job to make him feel that way. If nobody else makes him feel that way, on the job, he is at the bottom. He ain't got nobody answering him. He answers to everybody on the job. He's nobody. When he gets around you, your job is to lift that dude up. Oh, you lift him up? Trust you, me. You elevate. I ain't get, I ain't get Bambi to clap on the message in the last seven years. And I get Bambi now. <laughs> I went Bambi tonight. I jamming, boy. <laughs> I can preach for 20 minutes longer now. I get Bambi. <laughs> but that dude preaching tonight. <laughs> yeah, so, so that's, 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 that's the void. That's the void that we have on the inside of us. Anyway. Next week? Yeah, let's. Huh? I, the first one was who was first in their life. Number two is how progressive slash aggressive are they relative to their walk with God? All right, number three was, is there room for anyone else in their life? Is there room? Number three. Yeah. Is there room for anybody else? Number four is, hold on, hold on, you ready yet? Wait, 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 wait. Which page? Let me just email it to you. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, all right. Good. All right. <laughs> the next one is, and I won't email it to you because then I, I realize that when you do that, when you just give people your notes, then they don't receive it that well. Because when, some when you take notes, yeah, that you receive it. You know? All right. So n the next one is, um, that's why um, um, if you're going to make you, and you got to make sure and write, you got to write it. Because if I just send it to you, mm -mm. I hear, I hear, I forget, I see, I remember, I do, I understand. Remember that. All right. How many senses now? Yeah. You got something? You forget it? You see it? Oh, I remember that. You don't understand it until you do it. All right. Number four is, are they pliable? Pliable. That means, can they, can they give? Can they bend? Is there any leeway? <coughs> or are they of that set? There's a set of people who ain't seen it for their ma. Are they a part of that family? Who you meet me like this, and this is the way I is. Take it or leave it. If that's how they are, there's somebody for them, it just ain't you. <laughs> and that goes male and female. And, and whoever they are, they better realize that the people who like that, they die in. <laughs> by themselves. <laughs> that was good. They die in by themselves, lonely. All right. Uh, but you need to ask this question Are they pliable? Again, you get to, and, and it's good if you have someone that is spiritual, that is a confidant, that is someone that's spiritual, sober, and a confidant. Ask them these questions about the person that you're talking about. If you have somebody that's close to you that's a confidant, that's spiritual, that you can trust, ask them these questions about the person that you are involved with. Why? Because sometimes we still see through twisted lens. Does that make sense? So, 
now, if the, you don't just ask anybody this. And don't, don't ask the girl who you, your, your girlfriend who you know lose. Because then she go in there, she slide in there, and then, then your dude gone. True story. <laughs> All right, so I just try to help you. All right, so make sure you find somebody. Brethren, if one of your soldiers you're going to ask, ask the right soldier. You know? Um, so, because, like, this one about pliability, many of us, we believe they is bend, and they are bending. And what happens is, down the road, you can say, I don't know what happened, they changed. And they did not. You were just seeing what you wanted to see. They changed. You saw, you saw what you wanted to see. And so your lens, your lens were, they were already distorted. You need to do this a long time. But you wouldn't do this. You know? I remember one time I, I was, my last vacation, my last vacation, um, Robert and I, for, um, for our anniversary, we went to Exoma and we were in this, oh, it's beautiful. And uh, we had this little uh, infinity edge pool outside of our, you know, our little spot, you know? It was, oh, man. Four million dollar house that we had to ourselves. It was just sweet, man. And so I was, I was, I was swimming every day. <laughs> Two, three times a day, I swim. In. I said, I swim. Why not? <laughs> there, only us. There, only us in the subdivision. The whole subdivision, just one house, just one house, sitting on top of the hill. Uh, I swim, and I swim, and I swim, and I swim. In. So like day four of me swimming, I am, um, you know, done and getting ready finish swimming, go inside the house, you know, get in my clothes, and, like, everything is, like, cloudy. So, it's a little cloudy. I say, I, 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 say, I remember turning the shower water. You know, turn the shower water together. It's smoky. Turn the shower in. Hey, Robin, you just paid it. <laughs> no? Why is that so cloudy? And everything cloudy. And I and I I ain't telling nothing now because I, I wanna get scared because I realize it now. <laughs> and then I I did again, I ain't telling nothing. I go on going online and look up cloudy eyes. <laughs> <laughs> so I did. No, but I was scared, but <laughs> Because everything cloudy. And I go online and it says that you can, I think they call it chlorine eyes. You've been in the pool too much. And so I was getting ready to my glasses. There wasn't nothing wrong with the glasses. Oh, man, some of y'all ain't get it. <laughs> you got some stuff in here that you want to see. You don't even realize that your perception is being blocked, and you blaming all kinds of stuff. You blaming Robin for leaving. You blame all this stuff. For, uh, you show us no smoke, no fire. There's something happening inside here. The chlorine got inside there, and they said, "Don't worry, just just don't go back in there." <laughs> Stand, stop there. Just don't go back in the pool, and eventually the chlorine will diffuse. And so I hurry went to bed. I went to bed early that night, more than any other night. I went to bed early. <laughs> <laughs> go to sleep. <laughs> but I go, I was scared. <laughs> oh, my eyes, slow, 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 slow. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> oh, my eyes, it was clear. I said, God, you're mighty. God, you're, you know. And sometimes you need to take that step back. Close your eyes and reset. Good God Almighty. Man, I wish we had more time. Close your eyes, reset, pull back from it. Don't go back in the pool. The pool is what's messing you up. So pull away for a little bit. Allow your eyes to see something else. Whoosh kata. Turn from that. Look at something else. Get yourself clear up. Get yourself clean. And then go look at it again. And guess what? After that point, when I went back in the pool, I wasn't diving as much. Because all I was doing was going in. I was going in and I was going to get it, man. I was running laps. After that, I was going to... 
You know, I was not saying I'm just I'm just you No more that. No more that foolishness. I was operating up. I was, I was the ghetto swimming. <laughs> I was straight ghetto South Beach pools, baby. <laughs> I was I was doing a wild stuff. You know, in the morning looking pretty. Um, so so because, but many of us we ain't pulled back yet, so our our, our lens can reset. Yeah. We spend so much time, because some of us spend too much time too early. Swimmers don't get them chlorine eyes because they get used to it. Over time, they develop it, and their eyes adjust. I hadn't been in chlorine for, for like years, prior to last year. So I used to go to St. Andrews. We had a pool in school. I never had that happen to me before. But it's such a long time since I've been in that chlorine. And so all that chlorine one time, my eyes didn't know how to adjust to it. So I had to pull back. Some of y'all spending too much time too early. You're spending too much time too early, and so your vision is being skewed. Your eyes are cloudy. Because you jump in too, you, how do you get that deep so early? How after three weeks you even didn't call me today? What really? <laughs> Preach good, Denzel. How are you getting offended? You forget my birthday. Dude, your birthday was the day after we meet. I didn't know that. Like, really? I, I'm not obligated to remember your birthday. I'm not your ma. <laughs> Let me throw something about it here. Well, I bought you this. I didn't ask for it. Preach good, Denzel. I, I, you know what money has been for you? No. Thanks, no. <laughs> Whenever you got to demand reciprocation, get out of that relationship. Because truth is, it's not the person. You are not ready for a relationship. Say it again. Whenever you find yourself demanding reciprocation, reciprocation means do for me what I do for you. When you find yourself demanding that, get out of that, not because they ain't ready, because you ain't ready. Your mind needs to change. And oftentimes, people who do that, they're trying to compensate and overcompensate. Let's see if I can get you to love me. Let me get you to stay friends with me. So I can buy you some more things. You know, that's, that's what men who beat their wives do. They buy them things. To ease the pain. And so there are many women who have that same um, abusive husband mindset. They don't do the beating, but they, they buy the stuff just to make you stay with me. Next week we'll get back again again. We'll continue this. That's that's enough for today. I think some of you are having an overload. I see Marshall. Marshall like Marshall, can you do a little bit more? Just do a little bit more. Give me give me eleven minutes more. No, it's done. <laughs> <laughs> we are done. Come back, come back. I know we're supposed to do questions and answers. Um, this is what I want you to do. Now, um, um, anything you heard, watch it online. Watch it online. Um, look at it. Um, write down any questions you have. We say this and people don't do it, and then they get mad because they like, nah, right? Write, write it. Yeah, I tell you now. Write it down if you have any questions or anything like that concerning what was said tonight or anything else in general. And uh, we can, we're supposed to end tonight. We'll do another week on next week. We, put, we should have put this on the radio. We should have put this on the radio. This is good for radio. Yeah. Uh, next week, I know. Yeah? Oh. I don't matter. Just, just make sure tell me how much turn in the room so I can know what to say and what not to say. All right? Good. All right. Um, Hez, you are such a faithful steward. Hez been standing there with his basket in the hand for the last 45 minutes. <laughs> yes, sir, just tell me when, bro. Just tell me when. <laughs> God, God, God bless you. All right. Um, let's, let's pray. Father, thank you for the word tonight. Thank you, God, that uh, you spoke to us, spoke through us. Thank you that we heard from heaven. 
Now I pray, God, that what was said, Father, fell on good ground. Thank you, God, that even while we were teaching this word, we felt your anointing. We felt your presence. And thank you for being here with us. Holy Spirit, we thank you. God, for that person, I pray. God, I pray, I pray. For that person that is here that so needed this because they know they are not in the right relationship. Holy Spirit, rise within them that they have the strength to pull away. The strength to get out of that pool and realize they're ready for it. Supernatural strength to rise in them. The strength that only the Holy Spirit can give. For them to pump the brakes and realize they're not ready. Even I pray for those persons that are not in relationships but were desperate to get in. For this word to hit them, for them to realize they're not ready yet. And to spend the time that they need to do getting themselves ready. Preparing themselves for what you have for them, not for what they want for themselves. So minister to us now, Holy Spirit. To the married in this room. God, that we would get to the place of balance. Get to the place of balance that you want us to be at. Glory to God. Glory to God. Minister to us, we pray. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen and amen. I feel the power of God. Let's thank God for this moment right there. Come on, let's thank Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, there's some on. I feel some over there. Thank you. God release that on your people right now. Hallelujah. Ooh, glory to God. I pray you'll receive this, man. I pray you'll receive this. Man. Let me say this, man. Your pastor is shifting again. I feel something. Boy, something is happening. So as God speaks, man, receive what God is saying. Apply it to your life and let's move to what God has for us. All right? Amen. Clap your hands. Let's thank God for the word tonight. Amen. I have a tie devil on my desk. Uh, let's come on, come on, heads. Let's get ready to give. Get your best gift out. We need a tie devil on just let heads know you get it for you. Once you're ready to give, you can indicate by standing. We've been praying, we've been so now we're proud ever since.
Hallelujah. Wonderful, Jesus. Wonderful, Jesus. Rain is on the way. Everyone standing as we prepare to give. Even if you don't have a seat to give, still stand. We will pray the blessing over you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, God, for the privilege, God, to give into this great ground, providing us with this ground to sow into. God, we've been praying. We've been sowing. We continue to sow. We continue to pray. But God, we're now expecting, and so we're crying, heaven, send rain. Send rain upon the ground, this ground, this good ground. Harvest, kin, none of us, none of us. Those tithers, God, have been tithing been honoring you those business owners that have received that word and given upon their gross tithing on their gross those that made the covenant this year in January and said I'm going to tithe this year those that have increased their giving this year beyond any other year before I thank you God for sending rain send rain we cry out for rain thank you God for rain for rain if we receive from that prayer and this anointing and this atmosphere more than just the regular traditional shout, can you just release that worship to heaven right now before you move from your seat? Glory to God. We've been praying, saying, We've been praying. We've been sowing. Now we're crying. Heaven send the rain. Come on, let's give. Come on, bring it again. Hallelujah. one of these days when we get to the place like the where most of the folk work for the church and we can tell them listen let's come to work 11 o'clock tomorrow let's spend an hour and a half more in worship you know we can get there you know all right all the work for life you can tell you what y'all all all our businesses will be closed down to the 11 tomorrow we open open um life bank 11 o'clock tomorrow you know? life insurance we open all them up tomorrow but until then, we gotta go. <laughs> we gotta go. Listen, um, there's a very critical meeting, a gathering that I need to say some things to this house. Um, I have not called one like this in a very, very, very long time. The last time we did this is when we had Conrad in some time ago, but three years ago, those who remember that. But I need every member and follower, listen to me carefully. I need every member and follower of this ministry to be here on next week, Monday. It's amazing. I preached something upstairs and it's it's never left me. Every every now and then, Marisha says it as well, obviously that word resonated with her, that God remembers forward. He remembers forward. When God remembers you, it's not based on what's happened in the past. It's based on what's about to happen in the future. He remembers forward. And so when God brings something into your now, it's not celebration for what you did. It's preparation for what is to come. We call this meeting on next week, Monday, from Sunday. Didn't know. Had no clue of what would have transpired in the last 48 hours. I had no clue. God had said some things to me, and so I said, I need to get the house together to tell you what God is saying. And then I look at the last 48 hours, I was like, well, mother of God, you off the chain. He always remembers for us. So this meeting was, this meeting had, had, had so much more to do than what I thought I had to do with. 
And so I need to see um, all of you that are called by this name. Spread the word. All of you leaders, all of you that have WhatsApp groups for the different auxiliaries, I need you to hit this hard, marriage ministry, every ministry, hit this hard to everybody within your reach. Let them know that they have to be here on next week, Monday, um, because we need to hear what God is saying. It's not going to be a preaching session. Um, we're just going to share some things that God has been saying to me, and I want to bring the house on board. One of the things that I'm hearing stronger than ever before is that we need all hands on deck. And so um, I need to be able to tell all of you what I'm hearing God say, rather than telling groups of people, I tell everybody. All right, so I need you to be here. If you're a member or a follower, what does a follower mean? Follow means that you just follow us. All right, you haven't joined, you know, but this is, you, you've been coming here and you like being here and we see you regular. Um, I don't think I see nobody in this room who's not a member or follower. As I look through this room. Yep. Yep, pretty much. Members and followers. All right, so look forward to seeing you all on next week, Monday. Um, <clears throat> on the, get ready to leave right now. On the 29th, what day of, the, of April? What's that, a Friday? All right, the 28th and 29th, I'm going to be traveling to Great Harbor Key in the Berry Islands um, to do two nights of services. And um, I want to take... Um, along with me to go. I want a crew of us to go. So those of you that are um, available to go, you may not be able to go Thursday and Friday, maybe you may just want to come on Friday. Um, um, there's a flight that leaves out of the Berry Islands very early in the morning. And so let's say you want to just come one night on Thursday. You can come Thursday evening and be back in Nassau by before 8 o'clock and you can actually be to work um, on Friday. Or if you want to come on Friday um, and just we need to get on Saturday, that's fine. The beautiful island, you've never been to Berry Islands, you, you owe yourself to go there. Um, beautiful place. Um, um, we'll find some good accommodations for you um, if you want to come to be a part of, uh, be there with us. Um, I'll have um, accommodations, all the numbers, real soon, um, probably by the end of the day today. There will be an email waiting on me now. So I just want to put it in your spirits now. That's the 28th and 29th of April, going to do a life and healing crusade. We're going to go in on Thursday, as we always do when we go to these family islands. We're going to go in on Thursday. On Friday, we're going to go to the school, minister to the children, and get some folks saved in the school. And we can walk the community on that Friday evening. We can walk the community, as we always do. And then that night, we have church again on Friday night. That's what we do. Um, God has blessed us on all of the life and healing cruises we've done. There have been tremendous miracles. There have been an awesome turn every time we've done one of these. And so we haven't done one in a little while. And so we're going to do one in, in, in Great Albert Key in April. Andres is calling for us to come to Andres. Um, they're calling for us um, to come to South Andres. We have a, 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 a per, people in North Andres who, who think they own us. Um, but I, I hear you, Peggy. But there, <laughs> there are persons in South Andres that are calling for us and they are organizing to set up. So they, what they want to do, they want to set up a tent. They want to get a big tent set up so we can do a tent meeting down there in South Andres. Um, they wanted it for April, but I want to put Great Albuquerque in April and just deal with them later down in the summer months. And so those who can't make this, I want you to make that trip. We need all of you. When you come on these trips, you can ask, ask GDM. We need every hand. Bodies be falling everywhere. All right? <laughs> we need people to be laying hands all over the place. In Cat Island, man, man, in Cat Island, Timmy, I think we laid hands that night for about three hours. It was like, it was crazy. And people got, fella got healed as asthma. God, I mean, people, this is crazy what God did. He was Gallon, right? He's a guy that, that's who, that's who we've been buried before. Yeah, Lord God, our last time in the burial was just me, Tario, and Greg, eh? Just me, Tario, and Greg. Tario stayed, I left Tario there. Tario stayed behind and got like 10, 12 brothers saved and had a, had a meet with them that afternoon. That's the last time we've been to Barry Island. Yeah, okay, all right, let me say it again. Last time I was there, I preached that night. Tario stayed behind and won some brothers to the Lord and ended up having a meeting with them the next day they, and had a, had a discipleship class with them. Come on, let's thank God for that. This is what we're called to do to get this glory out, all right? So we're part of this ministry, that's what we're called to do. So um, let the office know, contact Marisha, call in, send me a text or something. Um, tonight, tomorrow, send, contact us, let us know that you want to be a part of the um, April trip, or you say, Pastor, I can't make April, but when Andres come in, I won't be there. Let me know when Andres is. I'll confirm Andres probably by the end of this week. It'll be sometime probably June, July, and I'll let you know so you can be a part of that. All right? There's another trip happening, and that's a smaller trip, um, and so I, 
I scared them to open that one up then we end up having the rent Bahamas here. Uh, <laughs> that's a trip over to Freeport that's coming up in the next three weeks. Yeah, it's coming right up real close. And so um, let's focus on the Great Harbor Key one where I help us appreciate where it's needed. Some of people go to Freeport, that's not fun. Um, <laughs> Freeport, we go for ministry, but those family islands really need us. They need the presence to be there to help them. All right, let's go. Um, stand their feet. Let's get up. Let's, can you pray for Robin? Robin, Robin is good. She's just tired. She's been going hard. And so she took the night off um, to rest. And so I'm glad she did that. Um, and, and how nobody mad that she took this night off to rest. I pray when I take my night, nobody ever called me that. <laughs> I tend to do one soon to take one night off. But pray for her. Um, pray for her. Uh, as um, She'll be back. She's, she's good. She's back to work tomorrow and everything like that. Um, I feel like that's another announcement. Um, it's amazing. It's crept up on us. Um, um, I don't even know if I can have Delton next week, Tuesday, because Delton, Delton and Julie's wedding is next week, Saturday. Yeah. It's starting to hit me now. It's starting to like, wow. I start to get butterflies. <laughs> like, like, I get married. <laughs> like, I started to like, like, I like wonder, are we ready for this? <laughs> I, I wonder, where, where are we ready? You know? Um, me and him didn't talk about his vacation yet, how long he gave for. We had, we had a meeting, me and him need to meet, figure out how we can work this thing out, you know. Because he's getting married at a bad time, Chase busy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, man, he's straight married, let him love yourself. Deuteronomy says, when a man takes a wife, he should not go to war for 12, 12 months. He should not go to war. Thank God we ain't fighting no wars. <laughs> All right, let's, let's, let's get ready to leave. Come, come, come Timmy, close us out now. Close out, Tim. Right here. Let's pray. Conquering King, we thank you all that has been said here tonight. God, we thank you for your Holy Spirit that dwell here with us. Father, we thank you for every person, for every heir. Father, we thank you for the good ground that was here that was saturated tonight, dear God, with your word. And now, Father, in the name of Jesus, Satan, we serve notice on you, every one of us here, that we tonight possess a power, a power that is beyond all other, dear God, that we serve notice on you, that we would stand up for Jesus, the soldier of the cross. And as we leave this place, we say to you that you have no authority over us. We belong to God. Every car, every person, every home tonight, we will sleep peacefully. We will rise up in the morning as soldiers of the cross, as children of this living God. And this we say tonight in Jesus' name. And everybody say, Amen.